Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, Past, Present, and Future. Welcome, and here now, Corey Gomez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, Past, Present, and Future. Today I am joined by uh, the star, one of the stars, I should say, of the original Magnum P.I. and an ungodly amount of other things. I am joined by actor and author, Mr. Larry Minetti. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Hi, Corey. How are you? I'm good. Um, Before we get going, you have a uh, book all about uh, your experiences um, that's out now, correct? Yeah, I uh, wrote a book called Aloha Magnum, which is all about the inside episodes, stunts, and shenanigans that we pulled, or I should say the cast pulled on each other and the guest stars on the original Magnum show. And uh took me a long time to write it. It's got a full index that you could go back and see who directed it, who the guest stars were. And I added uh, tons of family recipes. And uh, it could be obtained on LarryMinetti.com. And also... If uh, anybody wants a personalized cameo, I will do it personal to them on cameo.com. And uh, I, I tell you now, you won't be disappointed in either. Well, I have to ask you, how'd you get started in the acting business? Um, boy, that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I started out uh, I was dating a model who I'd like to rename, uh, name, keep nameless. <laughs> and she was a top model. And uh, she asked me if I would drive her uh, at 6 in the morning, which to me, I was usually getting home then. And I said, sure. And I drove her to this uh, uh, shooting uh, place called Wilder Studios. And when I got there, this guy was eyeing me, and I kept wondering, is he looking at me or looking at my girl? And finally he walked up and he said, "Uh, can I ask you something? Uh, The fellow that was supposed to do our United Airlines commercial uh, didn't show up. We have no idea where he is. Uh, Would you fill in for him? You're perfect. So I said, you kidding? And I, he said, no. And I said, well, what are you going to pay me? <laughs> I don't even remember what it was, but it was a pre- pretty decent uh, amount. And <clears throat> I sat in a chair, and uh, they gave me the script, and I looked at it. And I had never acted before. And I said, you better put up cards or something. I'm not good at this. And I read the dialogue off cards. And the next thing I knew, people were walking up to me on the street saying, hey, I saw you on TV. And uh, that was the start of it. I got the bug. Well, then your first big break was, it was Magnum P.I., correct? Well, not really. My first show was Chase with NBC. And I was in it for two episodes. Jack Webb had fired the original cast because they held him up for more money. He walked into the commissary of Universal Studios, and uh, I was sitting there eating lunch and had just been uh, set up there to be a contract player. And he walked up and he said, what's your name, son? And I said, Larry Minetti. And I know who he was. And he said, are you... uh, an actor? I said, yes, sir, I'm under contract. And when I said I'm under contract, that was the kiss of death. <laughs> he grabbed my arm and he said, come on with me. And uh, I went and spoke to the uh, head of casting. And the next thing I knew, I was in a, a van with a script in my hand and on my way to uh, uh, some beach area to shoot the show. And we did two shows, and they wound up canceling them. 
And then, after that show, I did a show called Baba Black Sheep, which Robert Conrad was very insistent with NDC and Stephen J. Cannell that he wanted me on the show. But Stephen Cannell, who was a lovely guy, said, look, we've got nine consummate actors. Minetti is brand new. And I don't know if I want to take a chance. He says, these other guys have been around theater, New York, everywhere, and for years. And Conrad said, well, bring them in and read them. So I went in and read. And, uh, you know, as I said, I was new and kind of rough. Cannell was not enthused. And uh, I went out with my head down and figured that's over. And they did the pilot of Baba Black Sheep. And the guy that was playing Lieutenant Boyle, which became my role, I have no idea what he did wrong. And uh, they canned him. And I got a call oh, in the middle of the day. I used to check my service all the time. And it said, uh, go to the studio immediately. Uh, you, you're set to do Baba Black Sheep. Go there and get Wardwell. So I did so. And uh, that's how I started the uh, second series, which was Baba Black Sheep. And so, then, that was really a training ground for me. Uh, James Whitmore, John Lorcat, uh, Dirk Blocker, the son of uh, the famous Hoss from Bonanza, you know, and a group of other guys. And I, uh, I became uh, very friendly with them. They were all of major help. And uh, I learned how to act, and Conrad... Robert Conrad, I should say, was terrific with me. Learned a lot from him and all my cast members. And, uh, you know, I, uh, at the same time, was going to acting school. But I must tell you, I think, excuse me, the best teacher is your heart and your mind. And when you use your heart and your mind, and you put everything together, uh, you you just come out right. And uh, either you got it or you don't. And thank God I had an angel on my shoulder and it, it all came together. And I was one of the thespians that uh, the Lord up in the sky said, go ahead, kid. So I was off to the races. Well, no, and you did Magnum. You had to be the envy of everyone. You're there. You're in Hawaii. You know, it's beautiful. One of the hottest shows out there. W was that kind of a dream come true part for you? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Don Belisario, who wrote the pilot, called me and said, I've got a great show that I'm doing, and uh, it's in Hawaii, and you play this character, Rick, who thinks he's Humphrey Bogart. Well, I, I kind of hesitated. And I said, well, who's the star? And he said, a new guy named Tom Selleck. I lit up because I had done Rockford File with Tom Selleck in 1979. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know that guy. He's prettier than Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> I'm in. So I had to fight the studio because they wanted me to do Simon and Simon. And I finally got through the Mech and Maw and uh, got uh, Magnum. And I was so happy because it was a great camaraderie ship. And I got along with everybody and the cast just fit like a glove and you know that shows in the show we all really loved each other and it uh, you know we, we became so familiar with each other we knew what they knew and felt before the dialogue came out did you ever get mad you didn't get to drive the car 
Well, I did drive the car. And uh, funny enough, in uh, 19, oh, what was it? 80, yeah, 1986, I bought uh, one of the Ferraris. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, but that was the same year that Selleck had given the cast uh, a brand new Porsche. Wow. So, yeah, so I had the Ferrari in my garage, and uh, they appeared on my uh, front door with a uh, new Porsche, and uh, boy, I happier than the king. Do you still have the Ferrari? No, I sold the Ferrari, uh. and I bought a Ferrari convertible, and I sold that, and uh, I very soon after I sold the uh, Porsche, I got a Speedster Porsche, and I sold that. I've had a lot of cars, Maseratis, you name it. You know, a show that you were on that I was actually a big fan of, I don't know, you were on, I think, three or four episodes. Do you have any memories of the Swamp Thing show? Oh, yeah. That was a fun show. You know, i would never seen one, Corey. Really? I remember, I remember doing those, and it was very interesting. Um, it was at the end of my contract at Universal, and I thought they were going to tell me, well, Larry, guess what? Well, we're going to give you a payoff, and uh, that's the end of it. But not them. They said, we're shipping you to Orlando, Florida, and you're going to do four episodes of Swamp Thing. And when I heard Swamp in Florida, I went, oh, rah, you know, uh, <laughs> snakes and alligators. And I said, I don't think so. So they said, well, we know so, and off I went. And it was shot at the Universal lot in Orlando. The only problem was, during the day, they had the tours, so we couldn't shoot there, because it was all night shooting. And they put us, our cold time, at 8 o'clock at night, every night, to do the swamp thing in Orlando, Florida, where I knew nobody. And uh, I thought it was going to be horrible, but... Uh, um, Chuck Bowman, who was the director, was wonderful, and I got to do uh, characters with southern accents and all different kinds of characters in those four shows. And I w wish one day I could see it. You know, it's uh, I have no idea where it is. I know they've got a new Swamp Thing. Yeah, they did do a new one. It, it was good, too. I'm a uh, uh, comic book guy, so I always kind of like that stuff. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a fun show. I've done a lot of different series and reoccurred and on a lot of different series, but I remember Swamp Thing, and it was a kick. Um, you got to be on, uh, what, I think you're always a different character, but you were with my buddy Branscombe and uh, Kathleen. You did, uh, about, what, about five or six episodes of Renegade over the years? Yeah, Re Renegade was a fun, fun show. One of the best and shows ever. Yeah, and I love Branscombe. I knew Branscombe from years before. Uh, he was a stuntman then, and uh, he uh, was in the original pilot of Magnum, and just a big, lovable guy. And uh, he played the Indian, the American Indian, on uh, Renegade. Mm -hmm. And I forgot the name of the character that I played, but... Uh, he was kind of a shady guy, you know, well-dressed shady guy. But uh, I had a ball on that show. And they're, you know, Branscombe's great. Um, Kathleen, I, she's one of the sweetest women I've ever met. And, oh, yeah, uh, I love Kathleen. Uh, and Lorenzo. Oh, he was a nice, he was nice. I interviewed him uh, once. He was very nice to me, too. Lorenzo's a sweetheart. The whole cast, you know, when you work on a show, if the cast is nice, it goes like peaches and cream. Uh, because the first day of shooting on any show, you got the stomach jumps, you're nervous, until you bypass, you know, the first half the day. And then you get cocky and you start stretching. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, on that show... 
I was relaxed right away and just had a marvelous time. And, uh, you know, uh, I forgot to mention, I did another series called The Duke where for NBC with Robert Conrad. Robert Conrad played a ex-fighter, and I played a guy named Joe Cadillac who was a bookmaker. And uh, NBC saw us together at Black Sheep, and they loved the combo. So we did that prior to Magnum, and uh, it just didn't uh, didn't work out. But they canceled it. You were in, there's there was a show that came out in '94. I loved it. I, I bought the DVD set when it came out. I, I think I'm the only guy that watched it. Do you have any memories of the episode you're in of Michael Dudikoff's show Cobra? Yes, and that's another guy. That's a nice guy. Um, Cobra was a show that I think he was a private detective. Yeah, and he drove that that Cobra car. That and yeah, it was a great show. I, he right. was awesome. And, it was a Canal show. Yeah, Stephen Cannell, and they called me and asked me if I would do it, and I was delighted because I got to play a guy with a ponytail. What was I? Uh, wait, let me think. Oh no, that was ponytail was another Cannell show. Uh, Oh, I, I, I can't remember the name of the character that I played. You were but Nick was, Coletti. What was it? Nick Coletti. Nick Coletti, yeah. And I was, I forgot, I think I was a con man or something. Yeah, I, you were one of the bad guys. Yeah, fun show. I mean, I had fun. Stephen Cannell was a prolific writer who wrote these different shows and he, I was fortunate enough that he just wanted me and, quite honestly, started me off. So I was just, uh, like he said, his good luck charm. And he, he threw me in about everything he, he made. And uh, can't even, I can't remember a lot of them. Jeez. I, you know, I was such a lucky guy I, I did tons and tons of stuff oh he he was a he could write tough guys better than anybody all yeah because yeah, he had all the tough guy shows and I like Cobra uh, Michael Dudikoff I like you know he was in the ninja movies I liked when I was a little kid and uh you know when he got that show I was real excited but yeah unfortunately it, uh, that since there were so many syndicated shows that one only got a uh, the one season run but I've always enjoyed it I, I wish more people would talk about it I so. And uh, I have fond memories of doing all of them. And so, uh, you know, as as an actor, I was fortunate enough to do uh, all these series, and and I expanded mentally. Uh, you get to know people better. You understand the people better. You know, it's uh, it's a, I, I just love the craft, and I just pinch myself every day and say you were a lucky guy and you lived a very lucky charm life you know you know i gotta mention because I, I just got the blu-ray it just got a collector set a movie you're in that i'm very jealous of you because you were in it with the most beautiful woman in the world uh 1993 snapdragon with pam anderson god yeah i forgot about that, that oh was fun. how how I mean, I, like I've said, I, to me, that's the most beautiful woman in the world, back, especially back then. Was she, was, was it even more beautiful in person, I have to ask? Well, she was dropped that gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, but you got to shut all that off when you're on the stage. You know, it's, uh, you know, you got to know, you go into it, you go into the character, and you, you, yeah, it's hard to explain. Mentally, you do what you got to do. You know, it's, uh, but she was very nice. Uh, everybody said to me, oh my God, can I come to the set and meet her? I <laughs> says, no, it's a closed set. What are you guys, crazy? <laughs> well, you can't, I would have asked you the same thing if I would have known you back then. That was actually a really good movie. She's a, a, a much better actress than she was ever given credit for. I, I think she's very talented. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I've worked with a lot of actresses and beautiful ones, and you know, it's uh, 
it's a funny thing when you're on the stage and you're in makeup uh, with them. Uh, you know, when I think back, I was in the makeup room with uh, Carol Burnett many times because I've worked with her numerous times. And Frank Sinatra and in the beat goes down, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Aaron Gray. But, you, you know, they become pals. And you look at them, you know, in the eyes and not on the chest. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, being actors are all brothers and sisters and we respect everybody and we respect you know, guys like you because you're part of our, our business. And, you know, it's like a big brotherhood. Yeah, I find myself doing that once in a while. I'll have a friend. He'll be like, man, you've interviewed, you know, this lady so and so many times. How how hot is she? I was like, um, you know, she, she's kind of more like a sister. I don't really look at her that way. So, no, yeah, I understand I mean, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you know, when you're in acting school, you wonder, am I doing good? Or, you know, when you start out, geez, how did I do? And I remember when I first started, Jackie Cooper was directing me, and he was, you know, a big child star and a top director. And I was doing a scene, and I yelled, cut, and I started <laughs> combing my hair. He flew across, across the stage and grabbed my leg and said, listen, you Hefter, comb your hair later and start learning what to do. So, yeah, you know, I had a lot of... Uh, Great moments and tough moments, and that's how you learn. You learn by making mistakes, falling down, and brushing yourself off. What's it like popping up on the new Magnum show? The, the, the guys on Magnum are very nice, and believe it or not, I went in there thinking, oh, well, it's just another job, and, you know, it's not good. Look, it, it's not the Magnum we did, but... It's a good show. Uh, it's so different from our show. Uh, I don't know why they called it Magnum, but they did. And I had a good time doing it. I got to sing. And this, uh, it was Universal and Paramount, I think. They were combined. And when I did Hawaii Five O, I got to sing. I mean, I have no complaints. I had a good, a good time. Brought in a good performance. Zach Knighton, the guy that played me, is a wonderful actor and a real nice guy. And Jay, who plays Magnum, is a sweetheart. And Steve, who plays uh, TC. I mean, the whole group is great. And, you know, Higgins uh, is a girl now. So, you know, uh, it's you just adapt to what you're doing. Yeah, I've talked to Amy Hill. She's definitely one of the sweetest ladies I've ever talked to. Amy Hill. She's Kumu, if I'm pronouncing it right. Oh yeah, yeah. She, she was great. Her. Yeah, she was. She was kind of like my lo love interest on that <laughs> show. Yeah. So you you've been in. I mean, is there any show that you uh, wished you could have been in, or do you just look at every show as a job? Uh, well, I always wanted to be in Law and Order. And that never got the chance because for some reason, New York and the casting directors, well, like they, they have a choice of New York actors and I, I, and I won't quibble. New York actors are great, but for some reason, New York, you know, picks the actors there. So it, it's a tough going to get over there. And, uh, you know, I'd still love to be in it. Um, I love, uh, what the heck is her name? Kid, I blanked. The girl that's in, uh, Law and Order now. Uh, Boy, if, if I, if I told you that, Marilyn, watched, I'd be lying. Mar She's Marilyn Monroe's daughter, Mickey Hagrid's daughter. Uh, anyway, she, uh, she's terrific. And I always liked Angie Harmon in Roselli and Isles and uh, wanted to do that show. And uh, 
I remember I wanted to do a show uh, called Bones. Yeah, I, I, that one I watched. Yeah, and came damn close. And I remember I went in for an audition, and they gave me, like, one line. And it pissed me off to the point that the director that was shooting it was the director had, that had worked with me. And I said inside of myself, you know, how dare you? You've worked with me when I've shot off two and three pages of dialogue. And you're giving me one line? You know, I felt demeaned. And I just, because of my attitude, I was terrible delivering it. And the group that was the judges didn't give it to me. And I could kick myself for it because I would have did the one line. I loved that show. Did you ever try for The Sopranos? You know, a funny thing. Um... Stephen Cannell uh, knew Chester Dane De- De Nova, who was the showa. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if he went under a different name, but uh, Cannell used to call him and say, "You got to use Larry Minetti," and he said, "I love Minetti, but he's not from New York, and these guys have a way of speaking, and they look like mobsters." And Minetti really doesn't look like a mobster. And he said, it'll throw off the whole game. And I used to be upset and watch the show all the time. And I got to know some of the guys. And uh, Frankie Valley from the Four Seasons did the show. He's a friend of mine. I said, Frank, you got to go back. When you go back, tell him about me and see if he can get me in. You know, but he says, when he got back, he says, you got no chance. He said, you don't look like one of us. So that was the end of that. He said, blame your mother and father. He (laughs) said, even though you're Italian, you don't look it. I remember Pat Cooper tried out for it once and didn't get a part and went on a long rant about it. (laughs) Yeah, Pat Cooper was. (laughs) Yeah, I I know Pat. I, I we did something together. I think it was some kind of variety show or something. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I like The Sopranos. It seemed like you would have been a really good fit on it. Well, yeah, I thought so. But, you know, you you think that all the time. I, I did a movie with Marcello Mastriani, and I had loved it. And I didn't think much of it until myself. And people used to go, my God, you work with Marcello Mastriani? And Lauren Hutton was the female lead then. You know, it's, uh, you know, I was, as I said many times, I was a lucky guy. Mm -hmm. No, so you've definitely had a a hell of a career. And you mentioned you have a a website as well, uh, LarryMinetti.com, correct? Yes, yes. And that's where we can get your book and we can do the videos? Yeah, my book and which is uh, LarryMinetti.com. The name of the book is The Law Magnum. And I do personalized, which I'd like to do one for you. I do personalized cameos, which means that you go to Cameo.com and they contact me on my phone, which I can't give my phone number out to the world. <laughs> no. But, but then I set the phone up and the camera and I do a personalized message to whoever wants one. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, Happy Anniversary. And I talk for about 30, 40 uh, seconds. And it's neat. And I keep in contact with a lot of people I never met. That's fun. And I, you know, I see a lot of people uh, have been doing that. It's pretty popular, especially in the, the pandemic and everything like that. It's a good way to reach out to people. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And I'm real honest. And, you know, look, uh, if you do anything, I'm that kind of guy that I look someone straight in the eyes and everybody puts their pants on the same. I don't feel any better or any different because I'm an actor. And 
I just feel that way. And I still remember growing up in Chicago, and my heart used to beat when I'd see anybody that was a film actor or an actress. I used to follow them. I remember following uh, Sybil Shepherd down the street in Chicago and the fellow that, uh, oh, what the case, I can't remember. Oh, the fellow that played Shaft. Oh, Richard Roundtree. Yeah, I followed him in the Sixth Avenue. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, can I do something for you? And I said, I just want to shake your hand. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, th th that's the way the world goes around. So. No, I totally understand that. And are you uh, are you on social media? Can fans follow you on like Facebook, Twitter, anything like that? Well, I do Facebook, not a lot, but once in a while. And if Facebook uh, comes to me, I answer it. You know, uh, I look. I answer the door if if someone rings it. If the light goes out of the refrigerator, I stand there and sing a song. <laughs> you know. I'm just a good guy. No, you are, and this was a lot of fun, and I, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to talk with me today. I really do appreciate it. It's not a problem, and I really enjoy it, and, and thank you, Corey. Well, thank yeah. you. I hope we do it again. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to the Chronicles of Hollywood History. Thank you from Gomez Richmond Productions.